Hi, I'm Sally Sattel, resident scholar at AEI and today's visiting factual feminist. Today, it's conventional wisdom that women are held back in science because of sexism. But a new paper by Cornell University team throws that into question. Good news, it would seem, but not to some offended critics. That's coming up next on The Factual Feminist. A research team by Cornell University's Stephen C.C. and Wendy Williams asked why women hold less than one-third of tenure-track positions in math-intensive fields such as physics, chemistry, geoscience, and engineering. They examined several hundred analyses of recent data on hiring, salary, promotion, productivity, and job satisfaction. And they found that women fare as well as men in professional achievement and satisfaction in these math-intensive science fields. PhD women are as likely as men to be invited to interview for tenure-track jobs, to be offered such a job, to receive comparable salaries, be promoted to assistant professor. Their rates of grant funding are comparable with men, they work similar hours, and they express similar levels of career satisfaction. Against this backdrop, there was an interesting pattern. The publication rates. For women without children, the rate was the same as that of men without children. But for women with children, well, they were the least productive, while men with children were the most productive. Now, the data from childless men and childless women suggests that there are no sexist barriers to women's success. But what about women with children? Why did they publish at the lowest rates? Well, more research is needed to fill in that picture. But you could speculate that this disparity exists because fathers are more likely to have a spouse who's caring full-time for the children than are the mothers. It's not rocket science. It's easier to have kids when there's someone home doing the child care. This reflects cultural conventions, not sexism in science. Even so, it appears that these differences in publication rate did not affect promotion to assistant professor. So if biases don't explain underrepresentation of women on the tenure track in math intensive fields, what does? The biggest reasons, according to C.C. and Williams and others, are rooted in women's earlier educational choices, like their chosen college courses, their occupational and lifestyle preferences. But preferences can be shaped. And one important influence is exposure to science education and to academic role models. And if women took introductory science courses early in their college education, the data showed, they were actually more likely than men to switch into majors in math-intensive fields of science, and especially so if their instructors were women. Right now, though, only 25 to 40 percent of new professors are women. But as more women enter the fields, become promoted, become instructors, the more female students will be inspired. When Cece and Williams presented the highlights of their work in a New York Times op-ed, there was blowback. One science professor found the piece to contain flawed and offensive logic. Critics claimed that the authors turned a blind eye to workplace hostility, thereby overlooking the malignant forces to which women were surely subject. But think about it. If harassment and hostility were rampant in today's engineering schools, computer labs, departments, and chemistry labs, why would women's satisfaction be as high as it is? What's more, women tend to drop out of the pipeline more often than men in those fields in which women are well represented or overrepresented, namely psychology, life sciences, and the social sciences. Why might that be? Well, family could be one answer there too. Likely there are others. Good questions for research. There was also an outcry that the op-ed did not address factors that dissuaded women from entering these fields in the first place. Well, actually, all that's in the paper itself. The authors readily acknowledged that decisions to pursue or not to pursue a chemistry major, an engineering PhD, or a geophysicist tenure-track job may be socially influenced themselves, and that some girls may well have internalized society's expectation of gender roles or the sorely mistaken notion that women are weak in math. As for evidence that women stay away from these fields because they fear a hostile workplace, well, there the critics don't present any data. It's a fine research question to pursue, 
But we also need to keep in mind that the image of these fields as being sexist may in itself have a chilling effect. And that is the very image that's being touted by the critics. With job satisfaction high among the women studied, it's a challenge to believe they are unhappy and oppressed in their workplaces. What's exciting about the C.C. and Williams study is that it offers a picture of the rewards that await women who are considering academic careers in math-intensive fields. Claims of bias against women in academic science have been greatly exaggerated, and at worst could be a self-fulfilling prophecy. What do you think about the Cornell researchers' conclusions? Do you have any other theories for why women might be underrepresented in math-intensive sciences? Let us know what you think in the comments section, and thank you for watching The Factual Feminist.